Dude, I was gonna do the video without you. Where were you? I didn't even know we had a video today. Why do we gotta make a second video for the Leafs seven one win over Washington? What? No, we gotta do one on the three two loss to Carolina. What is that from like last year? No, dude. Yesterday, the five o'clock Sunday start. Five o'clock Sunday. What sport do you think you're doing? Ah, and then yes, please, dude. What a great goal, dude. Crazy throwing waffles. Who are you? Up to this rhyme. Uh, hello, and welcome to Philadelphia Eagles fan reaction, I guess. No, it, just watch the highlights. Leafs lose 3-2 to two to the Carolina Hurricanes. And I know a lot of people uh, want to get all sad about that. But, and I kind of alluded to this in the last video, the Leafs weren't really supposed to win this one. Because 19 hours after their game finished against Washington in Toronto, the Leafs had to go to Raleigh, North Carolina and play the Hurricanes at I'm not a schedule maker. I don't profess to know how incredibly hard their job is. I'm sure it's grueling, but five? And forget the five. Sunday night hockey is just a problem. Because I would just wake up like a zombie on Monday because I stayed up all night to do homework because I didn't do any during the game, obviously. You ever trick yourself into doing homework during the game like you tell yourself you're gonna? I know it's like 1,500 words, but I got a laptop. I'll just sit right down. You know, I'm a multitasker. End of the third, you might have clicked like save as and maybe even come up with a title. The Keeners would have remembered to insert footnotes. Or at least a spot for the footnotes to go when you, you know, eventually come up with them. Anyway, the Leafs showing no jump in the first, getting outshot by by Carolina 10 to 5 but they haven't been scored on and if they could just hold on to keep it scoreless by the second the Leafs have a shot of course final 30 seconds Jay Harrison puts it on net and the Hurricanes go up one nothing a goal Ben Scrivens would probably want back but a game the Leafs would probably want back or not at five o'clock on a Sunday forget the five o'clock on a Sunday part I just hate when teams all teams have to go from wherever they were and play on the road the next night. I'd just love to know the winning percentage of the team that had to go on the road the next day. And I said this last year, but apparently some people just, they you don't know, process it. But I hate when people go, they shouldn't be tired because they're professional athletes. Stupid! They're playing other professional athletes who are better rested. Like it's a miracle the Toronto Marlies have won four straight because their last three wins back to back to back days. Yeah, in the AHL you can play three games in three days. Marley's next game, Friday. There are times when the NHL schedule is a joke, but when it comes to the AHL, that schedule is like George Carlin at his peak. Which now that I think of it, should give the Leafs the advantage because half of them are Marley's. Carolina out shooting the Leafs 19 to seven in the second, but Ben Scriven standing on his head and of course this happens. Hurricanes score a power play goal that goes in off Shen skate. And here's the main explanation for that. Or at least one I'm going to come up with. This past summer, as many NHLers do, Luke Shen went on a trip through many exotic countries and adventures. And along his ways, he found like one of those mystics, you know, like a psychic. And he thought, ooh, this will be fun. Maybe I'll get my, my fortune read or, or they'll tell me something creepy about my future. And the mystic psychic person, whatever, goes, come in my child at what? Because that psychic is a Habs fan and recognizes Luke Luke Shen and said bibbidi bobbidi boo coo 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 choo and put a curse on Luke Shen. If anyone else has a better theory for the way his season's going, I'd love to hear it. But third period now, the Leafs get the power play and when in doubt, Dion Smash! Big juicy rebound and Kessel just bloop is 15th of the season. Leafs finally got some momentum. All right, things are going. They might actually tie this one. Gave Eric Stahl a breakaway? Don't do that. Ben Scriven stops him, but he's left oh so alone and Jeff Skinner buries the rebound. But with exactly one minute left, a simple wrist shot on it. Well, it wasn't a simple wrist shot, it was a Phil Kessel wrist shot. Fools Cam Ward and the Leafs are within one. If they had to give out the Hart Trophy today, how do you not give it out to Phil Kessel? Because it goes out to the most valuable player. And I cringe to think where the Leafs would be without Kessel right now. Unfortunately, that's the way this one would end. The Leafs are outshot 41 to 25. But I'm not going to get too rattled about it because again, like I said, they weren't really put in a position to win. One more thing about the loss and one more thing about the grander scheme of things. Watching the game and I'm just looking at what people are saying on Twitter. Making my own observations, obviously. And people not so happy with the officiating. And regarding that, I will say nothing. Refs have a a crazily hard job and I normally don't have a complaint but one thing I have noticed and you don't even need to include this past game into the equation there are often a lot of complaints against the officials when the Leafs are playing the Hurricanes in Carolina. Like enough that I would notice it and think that it's weird. Like why wouldn't I think that about a divisional rival? The Habs, the Bruins, or the Sabres? The Leafs couldn't beat the Sabres for years. Why wouldn't I think it was them? Because dating back to like, remember when Antropov got mad and threw his stick at the ref after an overtime and got suspended? I think it was three games. And Leafs head coach, ironically at the time, Paul Maurice just blew a gasket. Ever since then, there's been a disproportionate amount of calls in Carolina 
Carolina, where I kind of go, really? And I won't say it was this game, just, hey, something to look out for in the future. Last but not least, this next four or five game stretch could make or break the Leaf season. It might not. Like I said, it's still early, and I want them to play, like, around 500 for the next month, given the circumstances. But this tired, depleted Leafs team continues their road trip for the next three games against the Lightning, Stars, and Ducks. Now, the disadvantage is they're on the road, but the advantage is those teams are hurting right now. Which, come to think of it, should mean they're hungry. To stay in the playoff mix, I think they gotta win two of those three. And then the Leafs finally return home against Boston, and then go back on the road in Boston. If the Leafs can split the home and home, that puts them three and two over those five games, and they look all right. Maybe even two, two, and one. I'm not gonna set the bar that high when they're this bunged up. That's right, I said bunged up. So that's it for this one. Add me to Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, Google Play, all that stuff. Donate to my Movember team. Pretty please, pretty pleased. There might be something in it for you. And next, the Leafs take on the Tampa Bay Lightning, and I hope Ron Wilson doesn't hold the puck in. Don't let the fact that Tampa's 12th in the East right now fool you. That system is impossible to beat, and it's killing hockey. Ugh, shut up.